I don't have time to stick it to the man, you know, to hell with the man. It's like we just are transcending that situation. We don't want to fight them. We don't want to cause them any trouble. The, we're just, we found something better than what they have to offer at any price. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the clean energy revolution that's already underway. Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. Today we bring you the story of Green Energy Futures' own editor, Duncan Kinney, who along with his family built a radically sustainable off-grid home called an Earthship. Uh, an Earthship is an off-grid home built out of recycled and natural materials as well as conventional building materials as well that treats its own waste, uh, collects and treats its own water, generates its own power, and uh, and really just kind of takes care of, provides all the services that a city would, but just in the context of a single home. Why did Duncan and his family decide to build an Earthship? Well, it came from actually Chris Turner's book, The Geography of Hope. And he wrote about this type of real sustainable off-grid type of home that kind of takes care of you, that does everything that a home should, but typically doesn't. And, uh, and I was really just intrigued and I passed the book on to my dad and, uh, and like, the rest is kind of history from there. It was also Chris Turner's book that inspired us to create Green Energy Futures. And seeing Duncan build an Earthship and learning about how they work explains Duncan's obsession with passive solar design and thermal mass, concepts that have made their way into many episodes of Green Energy Futures. So why did Duncan's father, an oil and gas man for 35 years, end up building this house in the middle of the southern Alberta prairie? Started looking at the concepts and uh, you know the way that we currently build our houses just doesn't make a lot of sense. We're really set up for uh, consumption uh, without really thinking too much about things where this is set up the opposite way where it's using the systems that are available to you that are in the earth, um, just the, the natural systems and uh, making you more aware of what you're using. I don't think we can do any better than that. Yeah, it's been kind of evolving for 45 years. It started off with just building houses out of beer cans and then we uh, started using bottles and tires and other things and then uh, that was kind of a contrived effort to recycle but we have been doing it now for so long that we really can't find better materials to build with because these are indigenous to the entire planet and they, they don't rot, they don't go away, they're, they're good materials. Duncan's family, the crew, and volunteers pounded dirt into 800 tires and used more than 12,000 pop and beer cans building the walls of the Kinney Earthship. The house went up in five short weeks with the help of a big crew. We hired the same crew from the same place we got the plans from. Uh, the company's called Earthship Biotexture. And they come up, there's about 13 hired crew that we have, and then we also have another 30 to 35 uh, volunteers or interns who are also helping us build as well and uh, you know I can't speak enough about the incredible passion dedication of those people who aren't even getting paid who are just helping us build our house. And if you were wondering where the name Earthship comes from Michael Reynolds explains. I, I turned around a decade or so ago and said I'm making a fully independent vessel to to sail on this planet and uh, it needs nothing and it actually is more secure and uh, functions better than, than buildings that, uh, that are hooked up to utilities. In the beginning, Earthships appealed to the anti-establishment, fiercely independent folks concerned about the environment and possibly the end of the world as we know it. In time, it's come to inspire the increasingly mainstream concept of the net zero home. So how do Earthships deal with your energy, water, garbage, sewage, food, heating, and cooling needs all on one site. So right here we've got our, our metal roof, collects all our drinking water. It's got 2,700 square feet of catchment area and that all drains backwards here uh, through our silt and sediment collection system and into our cisterns. We, we're right on top of four 1,700 gallon cisterns. That's 5,800 gallons of capacity and that's our entire water system. Uh, that's our drinking water, our washing water, that's everything we use gets stored in these cisterns. Once collected, the rainwater is filtered to make it drinkable. So here is the water organizing module. So just behind this box here are all the cisterns I was talking about, talking about four 1700 gallon cisterns. 
and they're just stepped up about you know maybe four tires high and it's gravity fed into here and here there's a, a filter there's a filter a filter a filter and then another filter and it gradually gets smaller and smaller and smaller and by the time it gets down to this filter it's five microns so the water here is nice and clean it's all potable and the nice thing about rainwater is that it's nice and soft so you don't have to worry about treating it for hardness with nice clean filtered rainwater in the tank all that's needed is a solar powered hot water system to provide hot showers at the end of the day all right so this is our hot water system our hot water closet you know, this tank is just hooked up to the two solar thermal panels that are on the front of the house. And it's a glycol loop, it's a really standard solar thermal system. Uh, this right here is our backup tankless propane hot water heater. So if it's nighttime or if we've used a lot of hot water and it's just not, uh, not doing it, then we fire up the propane hot water heater and we, we get a bit of hot water on demand. The solar system is fairly small compared to the net zero homes that we've covered on Green Energy Futures. So what we have right here is our, our power system, our power organizing module. So we have eight six volt batteries. It's wired in a 24 volt system. We've got our inverter, we've got our charge controller. We have 12 solar panels on the, on the front making up a, a 3.8 kilowatt system. And this is running the entire house right now, running the entire job site, all our chop saws, all our, our planer, our drills, our mixers. Uh, it's, it's run the entire job site since day one. So there's a lot of power here. The home is no furnace, thanks to a design optimized to take advantage of passive solar energy. It's a long, skinny bungalow that faces directly south with a greenhouse on the front. The entire house is a sun trap, and the concrete floor and tire walls store that solar energy and release it over time, keeping the house nice and cozy. A combination of earth tubes and greenhouse vents ensure the house stays cool, even on hot summer days. So we have six earth tubes that come out of the house, as you can see on the back of the house here. And what you do is you just you open them up in the summer, and we have a little screen on here to keep the critters out and uh, close them in the winter. You don't really want that cold air in the winter. But in the summertime, because the ground is always four to six degrees, uh, you want that fresh air to get nice and pre-cooled before it comes into the house. The Earthship's secret weapon is the greenhouse that runs across the entire south-facing front wall of the house. Not only is it the main hallway, it's integral to heating and cooling, produces food, and it treats and recycles gray water. Okay, so right now we're in the greenhouse. This is an extremely important part of the house. It functions as an air barrier between the living space and the outside air. So this is double pane glass here, and then it'll be double pane glass right here. And then you've got this giant air barrier in here. You've got your vent boxes up top, just right above me in order to vent the hot air during the summer months. Uh, right at my feet, we've got the gray water planter. So this is in the process of getting built right now. But the gray water from your showers and your bathroom sinks it starts at the top over there and it gradually filters down through here and it either gets pumped back to the top again or it gets pumped back into the house to flush your toilets. In the end, the Earthship will cost about as much as a similar 2,300 square foot three bedroom home in Calgary. And while it took the Kinneys years to research and prepare, once the crew arrived, the house was built in five short weeks. Michael Reynolds' Earthships may have started as environmental experiments in off-grid living, but passive solar heating combined with thermal mass has become the cornerstone of nearly all of the successful super energy efficient and net zero homes being built today. Have a question for Duncan Kinney? Email him at duncan at greenenergyfutures.ca. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. If you liked this episode, you should watch Net Zero 101, our video on the burgeoning Net Zero home movement. Subscribe today. We produce a new video every two weeks.